today's uh, topic is multi stage amplifiers so um, i'm keeping now subject uh, name is electronic devices and circuits and the subject code is ec3353 um, so this topic is coming under the unit 3 topic is multi stage amplifiers and differential amplifiers so in that we are going to first uh, see about the course outcome so in this unit what's the uh, course outcome is that we are going to analyze the frequency response of a bjt and mosfet amplifiers so we will see about the multi stage amplifiers so introduction to multi stage amplifiers so in numerous amplifier circuit applications the results obtained from a single stage configuration are not enough so in order to make better results more accurate and more than one amplifier is configured that configuration is known to be the multi stage amplifiers so this is the multi stage amplifier cascading stage so cascading is that when an input is given to the amplifier and that output is again taken and that is taken and given to the second uh, amplifier's input so likewise the number of stages being included so we call this as a cascading stage so you can i guess you uh, you all see this amplifiers av1 av2 av3 etc up to avn and in that avn we have an output so this is cascaded amplifiers each triangular symbol represents a separate amplifier and vcc is the dc supply so their arrangement or such that the output of the first amplifier is linked with the input of the second and the output of the second is again connected with the third and input and it continues to be going on so the multi stage amplifier is constructed with a series combination or connection of more than one amplifier in a single casing so that the output of one amplifier is used input used to input for the others or for example we can tell as if you are giving the 50 millivolt as an input for your first stage amplifier stage so it is going to amplify that 50 millivolt and it is going to be giving you a better better value that is more than 50 millivolt so that value which you have obtained as an output for the first stage will be getting that uh, as an output of the first stage and that input that output will be given as an input for the second stage so it is going to be amplifying that answer which you got the output of your first stage so it is it is it will be going on increasing so how will you calculate the overall gain means so it is being mentioned here so it is mentioned as a dash v that is equal to av1 that is the voltage gain of the first stage into voltage gain of the second stage into voltage gain of the third stage etc it, it will go on increasing up to how many stages you have included in the casing yes so that can be your voltage gain can also be represented in the decibel so for for the representing in the decibels you have to convert into db so this a voltage gain in db can be represented as 20 log of a into v so for a multi stage amplification process it will be the sum of all the amplifiers used in a single casing so a dash v db is equal to av1 in decibels plus av2 in decibels plus etc up to so how many stages you have been included that will be represented here yes so for example here i uh, we can see two stage common emitter amplifier if you uh, focus on the 
um, uh, transistors, see, we have a C1, that is input coupling capacitor C1 and a output coupling capacitor C3. So here, what type of uh, coupling is being used is a capacitor coupling. Coupling I'll be explaining in the forthcoming slides. Yes. Okay. So we have two uh, capacitors in the first stage, that is C1 and C2. Here, your C1 is the input coupling capacitor. As you all know, this input coupling capacitor will uh, couple the input terminal along with the input signal, which we are going to apply. Yes, and the C2 is the bypassing capacitor. So uh, VCC, that is the DC supply, uh, how much we are giving is, is mentioned here as 10 voltage. This beta represents the current amplification factor of the common emitter amplifier stage of your first one and as well as your second one. So this is an example of two stage common emitter amplifiers. So this is called cascading. As you all see in this first figure, the input is represented here as VI and that will be given as the first stage. So that voltage gain is represented as A, V1. That, is, that one represents your first stage. And there will be a coupling devices. Here in your previous circuit, I have the mentioned as the C3, the coupling uh, type used here is capacitor coupling, right? So coupling device is your capacitor and that will be connected to your second stage input. So if here two stages have been connected, the first stage is the one single stage common integer amplifier and coupling device is the capacitor and again the second stage will be the replica of the first one that is the first stage that is that is replicated at the uh, second uh, stage yes so as we have already mentioned that the total voltage gain can be measured as the individual voltage gains for example in your previous uh, circuit we have included two stages so how can we calculate the voltage gain here so the first two stage voltage gain is represented as av1 into the second stage uh, gain is represented as AV2. So we can also represent this as the first stage is V2 represents your output voltage and V1 represents your input voltage, right? Yes. For your second stage, obviously your V0 is your uh, output voltage, right? And V2 will be your input voltage because that V2 is the input voltage of the second stage input, yes? So here AV represents the overall gain and AV1 represents the voltage gain of the first stage and AV2 represents the voltage gain of the second stage. If there are n number of stages, the product of the voltage gain of those n stages will be the overall gain of the multi-stage amplifier circuit. So what is the purpose of coupling? Why, what for a coupling is needed? That is to transform transfer the AC from the output of one stage to the input to, of the next stage and to block the DC to pass from output of the one stage of the input to the next stage, which means it is getting isolated from the DC conditions. Next, what are the types of coupling used? So as I already mentioned in the circuit example, so first one is RC coupling, resistance capacitance coupling, and next one is impedance coupling. The last one is the transformer coupling. So first we are going to see about this RC coupling. So yeah, this is the most, uh, most commonly used type of the coupling method. So simply a resistor and a capacitor combination is being used for the coupling size, okay? A capacitor which allows the AC and blocks the DC in the main coupling element used to here. The coupling capacitor passes the AC from the output of the one stage to the input of the ne next stage. So while blocking the DC component from the DC bias to affect the next stage. So this will be the frequency response of the RC coupled amplifier. As you all know, the biasing, bi biasing is, is being provided by the resistor R1, R2, and RL. 
on RL, the RL will be acting as the load resistance also. So V DC uh, voltage, which you are going to apply is that plus VCC one. Yes, so RL, R2, RL, and again RE along with this CC that is coupling capacitor forms the first stage. And again, the replica of the first stage will be repeated at the second level. So using this uh, coupling, coupling type, that is RC coupling here, RL and CC plays the role of the RC coupling. So this could be the frequency response of the RC coupled amplifier. So here the uh, in your Y axis, the voltage gain is taken in the decibels and in your X axis, the frequency is being taken. If you observe the model graph, which you have obtained for the RC coupled amplifier, you will have a low frequency roll of uh, below your 50 Hertz. And you'll be getting a flat response between the uh, 50 hertz and 20 kilohertz and beyond 20 kilohertz now you'll be getting a high frequency roll off yes from the above graph it is understood that the frequency roll off or or decreases for the frequencies that is we mentioned in your frequency response graph that is below 50 hertz and for the frequency above 20 kilohertz so these are the advantages and disadvantages and applications of the RC coupling. Yes, so what are the advantages of RC coupled amplifier is the frequency response of the RC amplifier provides a constant gain over a wide range of frequency. So hence, it has been suitable for all the audio applications. The circuit is simple to, um, to construct and it has a low lower cost because it employs the resistance and capacitance which are very cheap and it is very easy in construction. So it becomes more compact with the upgrading technology. Yes. Um, next is the disadvantage of using the RC coupled amplifiers. So the voltage and the power gain are low because of the effective load resistance. I have mentioned the, the load resistance RL and the CC for the coupling, right? So that is the voltage and power gain are low because of the effective load resistance. They became noisy with age. Uh, as a um, uh, transistor is being used for several times now, so they'll become noisy with, with the um, uh, aging process. Okay, due to the power, power impedance matching, power transfer will be low. So this is a major disadvantage of using a RC coupled amplifiers. So what are the applications of RC coupled is that they have an excellent, we have already seen this, seen this in the advantages. They have excellent audio fidelity over a wide range of frequency and they are being used as in the voltage amplifiers. So due to the poor impedance matching, RC coupling is rarely used in the final stages. So what could be the next one, next advanced version or how come, how come this uh, disadvantage of the RC coupled amplifier is overcome by the next method? We'll see that. So next is the impedance coupling. So the coupling network that uses inductance and capacitance coupling elements can be called as impedance coupling network. Impedance coupling network. In this impedance coupling method, the impedance of coupling coil depends on the on the inductance and the signal frequency, which is JWL. So for uh, uh, reactants, we'll be representing it as JWL. So this method is not so popular and it is seldom employed. Yeah. Then, so next is transformer coupling. So transformer coupling, uh, it is also a coupling device that can be used, called as a transformer coupling. No capacitor is used. So, so this in this method, the coupling will be um, taking place with the help of a transformer. That is, uh, it itself conveys the AC component directly to the base of the second stage. So as we have already seen this in the common emitter, that is in the first uh, circuit, the, we have taken the example of uh, common emitter for the two stages. So the secondary winding of the transformer provides a base return path. And so this coupling is popular for its efficiency and its impedance matching. Hence, 
it is mean mostly used to type transformer coupling is the mostly used to type so next type uh, which we are going to see is that direct coupling so in the as the name indicates it has been used directly no coupling devices has been used, employed here so directly dc isolation can be converted and the isolation is uh, directly connected the direct coupling method is mostly used used to type when the load is connected in series with the output terminal of the active circuit element for example headphones and loudspeakers no this, this type of direct coupling is being employed there yes so transformer coupled amplifiers um, so yes the main drawback of rc coupled amplifier is that effective load resistance get reduced here so this is because the input impedance of an amplifier is low as we have already seen this right in a transformer coupled amplifier the stages of the amplifier are coupled using a transformer so let's see the construction and operation details of a transformer coupled amplifier here as you can see uh, in place of the rl that is load resistance now we have it has been employed with the coupling transformer so again here the coupling transformer has been directly connected to the uh, voltage divider biasing circuit of the second stage that is r1 and r2 yes again it is next for the next stage also in place of rl that is being replaced with the r uh, rl is replaced with the output transformer yes so across the transformer only we are going to measure the output so across since it is a common emitter amplifier so which uh, uh, in which terminal will be applying the input obviously the base terminal yes yeah. So the amplifier in which the previous stage is connected to the next stage using the coupling transformer is the, so as the name indicates, it is a car transformer coupled amplifier stage. So this is this, this could be the frequency response of a transformer coupled amplifier. So at low frequencies, the reactance of primary begins to fall. So resulting in the decreased gain and that higher frequency, you know, the capacitance becomes uh, capacitor between the turns of windings acts as a bypass condenser to reduce the output voltage and hence the okay and so this uh, type of coupling is not being used which is called uh, a frequency distortion this type of frequency response we call it as frequency distortion so these are the advantages and this are the disadvantages and applications of the transformer coupled amplifier so advantages are it is excellent in it is having an excellent impedance matching so gain is uh, gain achieved will be higher and efficient in operation so uh, distortion is higher here and transformer tend to produce hum noise so like um, like that noise transformers are bulky and costly and uh, so the applications could be mostly used for impedance matching purposes used for power amplification process used in applications where maximum power is needed. So these are the uh, applications of the transformer coupled. So we have already seen this directly direct coupled amplifier. So this could this is an example for the circuit. So no type of coupling devices use, used here. See, we have three, three transistors, T1, T2, and T3. No coupling is being used. Directly it is being connected to the again, uh, next, next uh, stages of the transistors. So direct coupling, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages and that uh, goes on with the direct coupling is that the advantages is that the circuit arrangement is simple since there is no coupling is required. So components is obviously is low. So it is, a, it, is a, it is of low cost and the absence of expensive coupling devices like transformer, right? So again, uh, disadvantages, it cannot be used for amplifying high frequencies. That is a very big disadvantage. The operating point is shifted due to the temperature variation. We all know and we are all aware of that the transistor is a very sensitive device that will respond to the temperature variation. So that could be the disadvantage of using this direct coupling type. Next is the application. This uh, has this been used for the application of low, low frequency amplification and low current amplification. So this is a comparison chart for the RC coupling, transformer coupling and the direct coupling. So the for the frequency uh, response is concerned, excellent, it is excellent in audio frequency range. And for the transformer coupling, obviously that is poor. So, and it is not preferred, right? And uh, direct coupling, we'll get the best uh, direct coupling uh, I mean, output. Cost-wise, RC coupling is really less, transformer coupling is more and uh, direct coupling is least. 
impedance matching so it is also best in the transformer coupling method so for the use for uh, voltage amplification process for power amplification and for the direct coupling now it has been used for the amplifying extremely low frequencies thank you